Hello everyone, welcome back to this tutorial on Snowflake. In this tutorial, we are going to see the final step of the data load. So far we have seen how to create the database and table in the Snowflake. Then we created the external stage from where we are going to source the data into the Snowflake. And then we created the file format because the Snowflake going to input this data from the s3 bucket in our case it's a aws and the data which is loaded in the external state that is aws s3 bucket is in csv format that's the reason we create the csv file format depends on what kind of data you're going to bring into the snowflake that kind of file format you need to create and the final step is nothing but the loading the actual data so so we we saw just now the s3 bucket we created then we created the file format as a csv and then actual process what it, it will do when we run the load script or there is a particular command we need to execute with which the data will be pulled from the s3 bucket translated based on the what file format we are going to use and will be loaded into the table which we created in the snowflake so let's jump to our snowflake instance and do the actual loading in this instance we have created the database and the name of database is city bike under the city bike we have the table called trips this is what we created in our earlier sessions and if you see the structure of the trips table it has the start time stop time trip duration and all other columns which we define of course you have opportunity to modify and uh, recreate these tables again if you need to then we created the stages st stages here and name which we gave for the stage is nothing but the city bike trips and this is connecting to the s3 bucket if you are using trial version then this s3 bucket is also available to use and after creating the stage we created the file format because in the stage we loaded the file in the csv format hence we created csv file data form uh, file format if, if you need to edit it you can just select it and click on the edit button and here you can change the parameter in case you need to now once you create all these things the next thing is we need to start the actual load process and for starting the load process we need a processor or someone to handle that actual processing so that is nothing but a node and that node or process node is named as a warehouse so if you click on the warehouse in the trial version we already get the compute where that is compute warehouse it is a processing node which actually processes your data load when you execute a select query or when you have the or like procedure kind of thing where you need the computation power in that case the warehouse will be used warehouse is nothing but a processor node or processing node now in case you need to modify you can just select the particular warehouse which you would like to modify and click on the configure here we can see the size is extra small the maximum cluster is one scaling is standard and auto suspend up to 10 minutes so this is the basic configuration comes with you can definitely modify as per your need in case you you want to create a separate warehouse for your dedicated processing in real time data analysts might be using dedicated processor developers might be using some dedicated processor or even uh, the data store might be using a different processor or different warehouse so you can create as many as you want depending on the your processing requirement and your budget because for processing whenever you use this warehouse or this processing node the snowflake is going to charge you for its usage if it is trial version it's a free but in your real-time project as many processors or as many warehouses you are going to create and use those depending on that the cost will be populated so we'll keep this our existing compute warehouse and we are going to use that 
So once we have all this everything is ready, then we will go to the worksheet and in the worksheet we will mention the command copy. So this is the command we need to use in order to load the data into the snowflake. Then use the term into and then after that we have to give the name of table. In our case it's a trips. Now we give the table so we are inserting into or loading into the trips table but we need to provide the source and hence the from clause will come and then we have to provide the name of our staging. So if you go back to the data, databases and go to the stages, the name of stages city by trip and that is the name which we have to specify and before that we have to sim use the symbol at. So at city by underscore trips and then we have to specify the file format. You can write this the file format just after this by using space but for formatting purpose I just mentioned the next line the file format equal to CSV. Again this name is coming from the file format name which we gave if you go to this file format and here we see the CSV. So this name we need to use for the file format. Once the command is ready we have to just run the, the script. Either you can select and use control enter button if you are using windows system or the other option is click on this run button. So both will do the same thing. I will use the control enter. It will give us the dialog box to it will ask whether you really want to execute this command. You have the option to cancel but we will go ahead and run it. So the process is started and here we can see the it's a process is in progress and it also gives the time and how many records are processed etc. Now we can see this process completed in one minute and one second and there is also sub task what are going on in that processing like for example queuing, compilation, execution all those details are also mentioned. At the bottom we can see the result of this copy command. You will see the number of rows processed, rows loaded, if there is any error limit, error seen, first error, all those details are captured. Once you are done with this loading, you need to verify whether records are really loaded in the trip table, trips table or not. For that what I will do, I will just write a command. It is very simple SQL, select, then you need to provide come a star from and then provide the command trips the uh, the trips is actually table name and then hit enter the data is pushed from our staging area to the trips table then this select query will return the results to us now this select star from trips this query took 1 minute and 26 seconds and the reason why these queries are taking longer time because we are using extra small data warehouse or the warehouse. In case you want the better performance, you want the results in like seconds, then you can increase your warehouse capacity from extra small to extra large or higher. So that way it will run the processing in parallel and it will give you the results very quickly. So I will show you that difference how when you change the smaller capacity warehouse to the larger capacity warehouse how the difference in the performance we are going to see in our upcoming lecture but for now just we can see that the records are properly loaded and it we can see around 1.4 million records are loaded in the trips table. Now suppose you executed uh, several statements so you loaded the data is there a track where you can see the when the data is loaded and so what was the size, how long that earlier execution. In order to determine that, you can go to the history tab or when you load this data, here we have the open history option, you can click there as well. It will show us like how long this process took to complete. In case you want all detailed history, you can click on the history tab. And here it will list all the processes so far executed by this user Snowflake1. 
in case you want to see the result based on the warehouse if you have the multiple warehouse you can select the appropriate warehouse and see particular for that warehouse how many execution happen over the time so we just ran the select star from which take which took like one minute and 26 seconds then we loaded the data which took one minute and one second and there is earlier history also present so this way you can capture the history also it also captured the query id when you execute any query it is associated with one query id and that query id is unique then the user the warehouse getting used the, how many clusters are there what is the size of the given cluster etc and all other details so you will able to know who executed what at what time so this is more kind of administrator or lineage checking it will be helpful and this way we can load the data in our upcoming session we are going to learn so much about the snowflake so keep watching this uh, space if you like this video please subscribe my channel and if you have any questions or queries about snowflake you can definitely mention in the comment section of this video thank you again and have a wonderful time